Okay, welcome back everyone. So as already mentioned in grade 10 you and, and high school in general, you are expected to write essays. Does anyone have an idea in the 30-1 diploma, how many essays are you expected to write? Uh, it's not six, it's not four, it's not three. Two. You write two essays in dash one. Most people spend about two to three pages on each essay, maybe four if they're really articulate or not articulate and want to write a lot. In 30-2, you write three different types of essays, okay? When I say essay, I'm essentially just referring to a written response, okay? There's a lot of different written response styles, okay? One of the styles, as we looked at last year, is... Um, source analysis so you're going to look at an image now the image you're seeing in front of you is going to be very easy to analyze you're not going to get images this simple in 30-1 usually one of your images is always a graph right so it's you're looking at data represented visually okay sometimes you might even get a quote in your image sometimes you might get some type of political cartoon you have a question yes you may um, you might want to wait, actually. Um, okay, so you should have had enough time to look at this question. So, you know, based on some feedback I got last year from Ms. Rantucci, um, this first assignment we will sort of do together. Okay. But how many of you recall from last year, you know, what, how should you start your response? Very simply, when you're doing a source analysis, you're analyzing an image, what should your first sentence be? Right, because a lot of you struggle. Is the first sentence very important? Yes. yes. Do some of us think no? Right. It really depends, right? Your first sentence is important in the context of, if I just write in this sentence, uh, rainbows have many colors. Right, that face you're making, that's correct. It makes no sense. Does my first sentence have to be, you know, something worthy of Shakespeare's praise? Do you kids know who Shakespeare is? Okay. No, it does not need his praise. It can be very simple, very straightforward. Personally, I love telling my students to just write in this source. Okay. That is an excellent paragraph starter. Three words, very simple, very straightforward, right to the point, okay? And that'll be really good for grade 10, grade 11 assignments. By the time you get to grade 12 and you're dealing with more advanced material and maybe you've spent more time writing as well and gotten more instruction, you know, maybe you'll feel differently. The topic in grade 12 is very different as well. The topic in grade 10 is globalization. In grade 12, it is... Um, ideologies so it's very different but in this source right and how might you follow that up we see what are we seeing inside this image somebody help me identify i, I can't see the image anymore uh you got your hand up uh, I was gonna say a gathering. we see uh gathering and what kind of gathering you mentioned something about flags right so a gathering of is it Koala bears, is it, uh, you know, what is it? Countries. Countries, people, right? A gathering of people from various countries. Okay. Do we think something special might be going on here? Like, what are they doing? I'll tell you what this image is after. It's kind of funny. Uh, it, it is not a funeral. People thought that last year as well. This is not a funeral. There's just some words written there. You know what, honestly? I don't think it's a funeral because I know the context of this image. This is just a watermark. You can just ignore that. Okay, so in this source, we see a gathering of people from various countries, they look as if they might be attending a funeral or some type of 
you know, what, what's another word for this? Like, what, whatever you see, what are some words that come to mind? Like, we thought funeral because there's this big, uh, you know, thing here. But what else could this be? Okay, political event. So I'm going to put this in brackets because depending on what you're le where you lean, that's what you can include. But you could write political gathering. You could write, what else do we see? Someone had their hand up back there as well, but. Okay, political gathering. It could be religious gathering. Jesus isn't far off. I'll be up front with you kids. Okay. Do we think that this could be some type of ceremony maybe? Okay, so you don't have to write exactly what I'm writing, but this is giving you an idea, right? So the way your paragraph starts off, in this source we see a gathering of people from various countries. They look as if they might be attending a funeral or some type of political, religious gathering, ceremony. What else do we see? Somebody already mentioned it. We see lots of flags. We see flags from many different nations, which suggests, what does it suggest? Who do you think is attending this gathering? Okay. Which suggests it is an international gathering. So that's kind of a word you'll learn more later on. What's that? Well, you need to know how to do this as well later on, right? So we do the first one together. Maybe the second one we do, I give you some hints. The third one you do on your own. Your essay, which counts for marks, is entirely up to you. So if you're not paying attention now, right? It's no different than a sport. If you don't know what you're doing when you get on the court for game time, what's going to happen? You're going to lose. You're going to embarrass yourself, okay? Uh, is there anything else we, we might want to add from our gut response? Or do we feel like we have enough with this little paragraph? Anyone else? Sure. Are there any symbols, any images? Are there any similarities? Do we see anything repeated? Right? Your, your image is in black and white, so it might be a little bit harder to tell. I'm going to scroll up, but does it look like many of the people are dressed in a uniform? So we can add many people are dressed in what looks like a uniform or dressed similarly. Okay. That's not a bad observation, right? We're seeing a lot of like white dress shirts and black pants, right? A lot of people in suits. Okay. And so because this, this first writing exercise is meant to be just very simple, straightforward, and just give you some ideas of how to respond, for the sake of this one, you know, this is sufficient. Okay. Go ahead. So once you have that question answered, feel free to flip over and look at the next question. Okay. So I know that we've only gone over one chapter, but our chapter was about cultural contact. Can anyone help me remember what is cultural contact? She had her hand up first. Hold on. Back there. Say that again. So not just countries, it's good, but when two groups of people, two or more groups of people who are different come into contact. Based on the flags we're seeing, do we think that there's some bit of globalization going on here? Okay, so we could write about that. And specifically, we're looking at this question. What does this image say about the movement of humans? Okay, look at all these flags. We see, which ones do we recognize? This one's pretty easy, America. We see Germany. I, I don't see that one myself, right? What, what's this one over here? 
Australia. What's this one? Probably England, I think. Uh, this one back here? India. This green one back there? Brazil, right? Um, are all of those countries in one area? No, they're far apart, right? So when we're considering our question, what does this image say about the movement of humans? What could we write? Does anyone have any guesses? So we can start with saying this source suggests that, you know, let's just say something very kind of out there. Globalization is an ongoing event. We see flags from various nations, different countries, from different continents. And it looks like people are gathering in one area, maybe for a sp specific purpose. Okay, so this is like a very simple opening. Right, that's a pretty easy first two sentences. How could we follow that up? Right, you might want to consider adding in how do you think these people got here, right? Because that uh, traveling is an aspect of globalization. So in terms of how they travel and how they communicate as well. Okay, so how could we follow this up when we're talking about either movement technology or communication technology, right? How do you think all these people got to where they are? Also, before we even answer that question, where do you think they are based on where these flags are placed? Is there any particular flags that stand out? Well, United States is back here. It's with the rest of them, right? So do we think they're in the U.S.? No, U.K., right? Why do we think U.K.? Yeah, it's right up front, okay? So we might even want to add that in our intro based on the U.K. flag being in the front. They may be gathering in the United States kingdom okay so you you might want to add that in there as well it's up to you okay but it's not a bad uh read of the information in the image that's the first, um... that's the first response yeah so you might want to add the sentence you don't have to but the reason why I say it's good to add this is because when you're writing an essay, you also want to demonstrate to the person who's marking it that you're, you're able to critically think about what is in the image. So it's not obvious where they are, but it's a good inference that they're in the United Kingdom because, hey, that flag is kind of at the front and they have to be somewhere, right? They're not on Mars. I promise you that. <laughs> So scrolling down, we can talk about, you know, movement technology. Uh, and how might we do that? So this source suggests that globalization is an ongoing event. We see flags from various nations, different countries, from different continents. And it looks like people are gathering in one area, maybe for a specific purpose. It is likely that these people use modern methods of transportation to gather themselves additionally with the help of modern communication systems they may have been able to help organize such an event okay so again you're bringing in some data some evidence to support how these people would have met okay and considering you know the variety of flags that these places are from far and wide away you know it's likely they used an airplane 
It's a color photograph, so maybe it's a modern one. There's a watermark on there as well, which suggests that maybe there's some modern technology. Like, this isn't a historical image that's been updated. It's very likely it's recent. In fact, if we go up here, maybe we'll even see somebody on a cell phone. It's a bit hard to tell because most of the people are in the background, but... So for anyone who wants to add a response here, keep in mind with social studies essays, it's less about getting the right answer and it's more about providing evidence and facts to support your claims or arguments, right? So how many of you remember in the notes, we talked about a case study. What country was the case study about? Anyone? Sudan, right? And so the reason why highlighted that as a case study is that when you are writing your essays, you want to bring in this information. You know, you're talking about globalization, about cultural contact. Maybe you want to bring in, bring in examples of good and bad moments in history with cultural contact. Maybe you want to bring in other information about how things are impacted, right? So for anyone who would like to add or contribute to this image, to the response, Keep in mind, it's not so much whether or not you're right or wrong, but whether or not you have good quality evidence that supports whatever claim you're making. Okay. But I think maybe we can finish by just wrapping up. You know, this image suggests that, uh, let's say, what was the question again about the movement of humans that the movement of humans is necessary along with the cooperation of various groups to, let's say, what's a good, good idea here? This image suggests that the movement of humans is necessary along with the cooperation of various groups to, I don't know, let's just throw out there, have a sustainable future. Okay. So you don't have to include this last one. Again, I'm just summarizing the, again, the point of this uh, exercise is just to get you to start thinking about not only what are you seeing in the image, but how do you connect it to what you're learning and how do you make inferences? So how do you look at an image and say something that is unique about it that maybe isn't as obvious? Right, that's how you get the 80, 85, 90, 95, 100% marks. You know, you have to think a little bit more deeply about the image than other people are and articulate that. So write that down in your response. It's not just about thinking it. You have to be able to communicate and express what you're seeing there that isn't obvious, that is a little bit more subtle. Okay. So this last bit, you don't have to write that last bit down, but if you want to, feel free. But uh, yeah, we'll stop there.